Okay, we're going to do multiplying radicals. Most numbers are not perfect squares. Their roots are irrational. So let me stop there. So the square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. Mm -hmm. But the square root of 2 cannot be expressed as one nice number. It's actually 1.414, and it keeps going on and on and on and on. Know, like one four one four one okay. four one four. It actually doesn't go one four one four. If it did, then it would be a fraction. We could make it into a fraction. But this it three one four one four, and then it's got some other decimals afterwards. Oh, and okay. you, it, that would be really nice if it was one four one four one four. Yeah. Because then we could turn it into a fraction, mm -hmm. and then it wouldn't be considered irrational. Oh, that's right. But since it doesn't, since it doesn't repeat, it just keeps all these different numbers on and on and on. Um, it's not a pattern or anything. It's called irrational. Okay. And so. Um, they're suggesting that when the root cannot be expressed as an integer, like the 3 right here, then we leave it in the radical form, like the square root of 2. Okay. okay. If a situation requires a value for it, a calculator can be, can be used to get the approximation, but the calculator is never going to give the exact value for the square root of 2 because right. it stops at a certain point. We can find the exact value for the square root of 9, but not the exact value for the square root of 2. Okay. Okay. In radical form, mathematical operations can be used. To multiply radicals, we apply the product property of radicals. So, for example, they show it right here. If I have a radical, some, and by the way, the word radical just means this, this symbol, okay. okay? This is a radical, and it could be a square root, or it could be a third root, it could be a fourth root, a fifth root. But right now, we're going to write the letter N because that means that it could be any root, okay? okay? And we're going to put a letter in here. We could put X, we could Y. They chose R, and it doesn't really matter. If I want to multiply it by another radical with the same, if the same, and this is not an exponent, this is a, a radical. So it's got the same number there. What is that called? Same index. There we go. The same index. I can multiply these together as long as these two indexes are the same. Oh, so it'd be like S. Time, S R N. Uh -huh. Yeah, it, and so we'd have uh, we'd have an N here, yes, mm -hmm. and then S R. And then S R or an R S doesn't matter. However, we wrote it, we can write it back and forth. Okay. Oh, so we that, just multiply those together. Oh, I like this. So that's not bad at all. Now, if for some reason, let's go back. If this right here was not the same radical, if this was a Q, I'm just making that up. So okay. would you put like Q R? And we can't. R this would totally not be able to be multiplied, and we would just totally stop. If these two are not the same, we can't put them together. So it's just you, right? You can't do it? Right. This would be the most simplified that it could be, would be that. Okay. So, if, for example, if I have the square root of 3 times the square root of 5, both of them have the same index of 2. So this is the square root of 15. Okay. Okay. If I have the square root of 2x and the square root of x... We just Three multiply eights. the, this is a, and we're multiplying, so we're not adding this time. For multiplying, we have the 2, and we have an, that looks like a Z. That looks an square? X and X make an X squared. Eventually, we will learn how to actually simplify that squared and the square root. Something will happen to it, but right now, we're leaving it like that. Okay. okay. All right. If we have the cube root of 7 and the, multiplied by the cube root of 5, they have the same index, so we can multiply those two together 35. and make that the cube root of 35. That's right. Okay. Got it. If we had the square root of 5m, and I can make sure that your square root's long enough to cover everything in there. And the square, if you just do this, it looks like the 4 is the only thing under it, but it's really that, okay? okay. All right. The square root of 5m and the square root of 4n. 20mn? Yes. Very good. Eventually, we will be learning how to take the perfect square roots of 4 out of the radical, but for today, they're just wanting you to learn that you can multiply everything together, okay? okay? All right. Now, they're giving you another example right here. If you have the square root of 15 and the cube root of 5, and we're multiplying them together, you cannot multiply them together, this would be as simplified as it, as it can be, and we can't put it together. All right. All right. 
Mm, ooh, what if we had numbers here? What if I had 2 times the square root of 3 times 4 times the square root of 5? What we do? So gonna, oh, go ahead. 8. 8. Time, oh, what, the square root uh -huh. of 15. Yes! Woohoo! So I can take the stuff that's out here. Kind of like, almost, um, like combining like terms. Exactly. It's kind of like line combining like terms. I can do the numbers on the outside together and then the things on the inside together. Okay? Yeah. All right. I like this. Good. So this is the same thing. If I have 6 radical 2, radical 3, and 4 radical 2. 24. Uh-huh. With the radical um, 12. Yes. Okay. So now... If a perfect root or cube is under the radical after multiplication, we're going to extract the root. That's where I was talking about us taking them out. This could be, have been done in the second example of the previous page back here. I want you to notice I have a 2 and a 2 right here. So you could have gotten rid of it. I could have. And so I'm going to show a different way than they do it here. Okay, I'm going to we're going to clear the screen, and I'm going to do some extracting, and then we're going to do this again to show you how we could have done it with the extracting, okay? We're going to do the square root of 8, okay? Okay. Okay. Is there... And so what I like to do is do the prime factors of 8. What are the prime factors Two of 8? to the third. Yes. And I'm going to just... I'm going to write them... I like to write them all out, okay? Now, this represents 4. <coughs> Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. What's the square root of 4? 2. Okay. So if there is a double, that's a perfect square root, and it can come out as, that is going to come out as a 2. Okay. Because the square root of that Times. is 2. Okay. So then, and this guy's left over in there. Oh! You with me? Okay. Yes. So if I have the square root of, let's say, it's 2, 45. What's the prime factors of 45? 5 and uh -huh. 8. And 9. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And 9 is? 3 and 3. Good job. So it's 5, 3, 3. Are there any perfect squares under there? The 3 and the, the 3. The 3 and the 3. And it comes out as a 3 because that's really 9, right? And squared mm -hmm. and it's 3. So the doubles come out as singles. Got it. And that's left over. Okay? Okay. All right. So when you were doing this one a minute ago, 6 radical 2 times radical 3 times 4 radical 2. Instead of you multiplying these together, you could have multiplied the 24. But I would have done the 2, the 3, and the 2 together and saw that there was a partner. Yeah, and there's a 4. Oh, yeah, but... Oh, I, wait. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, I thought it was under okay. a radical. So then, this is a partner, right? So then it'd just be 2 times 3. Yes. Which would be 6. No, sorry, well, I have a, the two's going to come out. Mm -hmm. This 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 is going to come. This is like oh, we had over here with the so, doubles. So then this, you do two times twenty four. Yes. So then that would be forty eight. Yes. Times um, six. Careful. Two times three, right? These twos come out as a single. So it'd be two times three. And what's left over? Because okay, so this is what is two times two? Four. So what's the square root of 4? 2. And you took that 2 and multiplied and it by the 24 to get So it's eight. just 3. So it's just 3 left. That's right. Three. I knew that. Okay. And so if that's how, um, that's how one of them was back here when we were just learning that we could multiply things together, I said that we're going to learn about taking the perfect one out. Yeah. And so it might have been better instead of us multiplying 20 and then. To look first and say, is there any perfect ones I can take out first? Two. So, then so I could have done five m n with two on with a two here n and then multiplied it together. And what would I have had here? Then you would have had two on the outside, right? Uh huh. And then five on the inside m n. Yes. Okay. They should have taught you that before. I agree. <laughs> Because now okay. I'm having to go back and, like, relearn right, it. Right, right, right. Or two, two lessons. Yeah. 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 So, yes. So let's try some of your homework. And let me pick one that I know you're going to have. Well, no, we'll just do that. Okay, here we go. The square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Can I take any, any, is there any perfects to take out? Nope. No. So it's just square root of 6. Yes. Okay. So then here. 
square root 3 times square root 5. Square root 15. Yes, and there's, there wasn't any doubles to take out. Nope. And what about the square root of 5 times, oops, well, that's terrible. And the square root of 5. Square root 25. Mm -hmm. Wait a second, just square root 5. Just, no. What? Square root 5 times square root 5 doesn't equal square root 5. It'll just be 1 5. It'll just be a 5. Yes. Okay, yeah. there we go. So then, oh, what about when we, we didn't go over what would happen if it was cube root. Then so, so how would I, if I had the cube root of 27, what is the prime factor of 27? 9. 9 and 3. 9 and 3. And what, what about, so I have the 3, and what about that 9? Can it be broken down again? To 3, 3. 2 yes. threes. And then okay. Three threes. Now, back here, when we had square roots, we looked for doubles. <coughs> but when we're doing cube roots, we, we look, look for, for triples. triples. That's right. So Oops. it'd be 1, 3. So then we, that comes out as a single, plain old 3. 3. Because 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. Got it. Okay. So if... Here's another one like that. Here. No? Yes. Yeah, that's one like that. Or there's one here if you want that one. Is that going to have one? Is that yep. going to have one? Let's check. So if I had the cube root of 9 times the cube root of 4, are there any triples? Because this is a cube root now. Are there any triples under there? Nope. No. So you can't do it? So I can't take any out. So I just make the cube root of what? Of 3, 6. How about this one? 7 cube root 2 times cube root of 2 times 4 cube root 2. Okay. 28 will be on the outside. 28 will be on the outside. Okay. Then we got a double. Triple. Do so we want triples or do we want triples? Triple. We want triples because of these cube roots, right? <gasps> so it would just be square root 2. So it won't be square root 2. No, it'll just be 2. It'll just be 2. That's right. Okay. And then... That equals um, 16, 56. Yes. Okay. I like okay. these. Good. Good. I think we're done. So we've done some of your homework. Um, you'll look for doubles and triples before mm -hmm. you multiply together. And then yeah. and the, if it's a cube root, it, you take triples out. If it's a square root, you take doubles out. Okay. 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 We're done.